Hello, everyone. Welcome back today to CRT Market Watch. This is an exclusive show dedicated to the CRT and higher end pro video monitor market, mostly through eBay. That's what we're looking at today. So let me just get into some details on what we're going to actually be doing in today's episode. This is going to fall in line with other Market Watch episodes where we're going to look at pro CRT monitor sales on eBay in North America. And every monitor must support 240p through RGBS without modification. We're going to be looking at sales data for September 9th to November 30th in 2020. Prices are not going to include tax, and they also will not include a make an offer price if one was not listed. I've started a thing called working price points for each PVM line. And I'll explain this more when we're looking at a price point for a PVM line, but this is what I consider a grade B to A, kind of not the best quality or condition, but definitely one that is working and doesn't need to fully be serviced. It may need some calibration. It's a PVM that you should be able to buy, hook up and use, not really needing a lot of circuit board repair or anything like that that's going to be lower than a grade of what i'm considering on this working price point we're going to highlight specific monitor sales and then we're going to look at market trends and we're going to do some analysis of some of those sales we're going to start off today with ikigami crt monitor sales we've got a 14 16r that sold in september for 287 and then a 14 9r it sold for $225. And then the bottom one is a 2017 RA on May 3rd for $153. You notice it says PU beside that. That means that it is pickup only, so no shipping involved. If there's not something like that designated next to the sale listing, then it was including the shipping costs. So that's not a bad price if you could get a couple of CRTs that do 240p. Now these are on the lower end side in the earlier 90s to mid 90s models. The one highlighted sale was the HTM 1517R in the picture there and that is a multi-format monitor so it accepts uh, signals beyond 480i so it goes 480p and then all the way up to 1080i so it actually does some high definition stuff and uh, much more desirable That's along the lines of those quality of like a 14L5. JVC had a couple sales too. Again, these companies that we're talking about first off are not going to have huge numbers. These are uh, more the ones that you are outliers that did make broadcast and professional quality monitors, but they're not searched for as much as the Sony's. You also do generally get a lower price point on many of these. First off, there's H15. Zero CG, that is a 14 inch screen, 750 TV line, broadcast quality monitor online with like a BVM F5U. This one had no RGBS component card. It sold for $324 shipped. However, you can add a card and there are those cards are available secondary on eBay and they're made for a reasonable price, generally under $100 for that custom card. So that's a fair entry point for a higher quality JVC monitor. And the one under that, that is a 16 inch, and that's actually a digital monitor. It accepts 240p all the way up to 1080i. Or for $462, that's a pretty good price. Here's a look at that specific listing. This was on an auction, and the only thing was it did have some scuff marks on the screen, which you can kind of see on this picture right here. And this monitor should have a protective anti-glare layer on that screen. So the idea being that if you bought this monitor, you could get it and remove that anti-glare screen and then have a clean screen underneath it. And for $462 shipped, that is a really good price for a 16 inch multi-format high end broadcast level monitor. So next one we're going to be looking at is these Olympus monitors and you'll notice only three Olympus sales. These were specifically listed as Olympus OEVs, CRTs. 
And I will tell you, this Olympus OEV143 model is a direct copy of the Sony PVM20M2 MDU medical version, which is the preferred version of the M series M2 units that has the additional second RGB and component input on the back. And the only real difference is the color scheme and the fact that it says Olympus on the front and the back of the shell. So three of those sold around $350 each. There was one that was cheaper. So those tend to sell for a little bit less than what the M2 MDU unit would. And a lot of these listings for Olympus come from old medical supply companies or medical recycling companies on eBay. And they tend to not have the proper equipment to test these CRTs fully. So a lot of the listings will look like what these do in the pictures behind me, where it won't actually show anything displayed. It'll say it's power tested. It might even show a screen with some of the menus pulled up like it is in this picture. And the screen might even look discolored. However, most of the time, that's a good sign that it's working. And so you do take a little bit of a risk, but I've found that more often than not, you're going to get a much better deal with these Olympuses just because they're not searched for as often and, and not as many people seem to know about them. All right, now let's move into the Sony BVM sales. These are the best of the best. Some of the biggest sales that happened this month were specifically BVMs. Now, first off, we've got a little one. This is a D9H1U, and it is a field monitor. Now, look, there is a DH5U in the 9-inch, and that has the built-in controls. I've done a video specifically on that monitor where I serviced one. This one is an H1U, so it doesn't have the controls built in. It has a separate control board. That's what the 10R is. So that's valued, that BKM control board is valued at about $200 to $300 right now on eBay. And then this monitor also included the BKM 129X card. Uh, so that's a good deal because that one is, again, $200 to $300. And then finally, the tube on this monitor only had 55 hours listed on it. So that's really low. The only other thing that is worth noting is it only had the 16 by nine bezel on it. And this one, this small field monitor, it is not like the larger D series monitors. Those from the 14 inch and up have an insert in them that you can remove, at least the D 14s and the D 20s. They have an insert in them that you can remove and you can either put the insert can be either four by three or 16 by nine. However, on this smaller D9, it is the entire frame on the bezel. So you have to unscrew it and take the entire bezel off with uh, the plastic and everything and then expose all the wires around the front of the CRT if you don't want to have the 16 by nine bezel on there. And those can be kind of difficult to obtain at this point, generally costs about $200. And so that's just the one disappointing thing about that D9 is that 69 bezel is stuck unless you want to Dremel it. I did an entire video on this monitor, so I'll not cover it really much at all here, but it was a huge sale. It was the most expensive one-time monitor sale. And it was the only monitor that was sold on eBay that was listed, listed as refurbished. So that is something I want you to know. Those are the two main BVMs that were sold. One other thing I want to mention on that D9 is to remember that it does accept uh, 240p up to 1080i. So it is also multi-format, just like the D32. The BVM 8045Q that you see there from October was $300. It was picked up, so it was, again, not, to, not shipped. The others were shipped. And that one is analog only and similar to like the 804 series, which we'll talk about soon here. That's a PVM. And we're going to get into the Sony PVM CRT sales. And of course, we're going to start with these monitors that I just mentioned, the 804 series. Now, there is an 804 series monitor that we're not talking about. That is the 8040 because that only supports S-Video and Composite. However, the 41Q, 42Q, 44Q, and 45Q all have models that do support RGB sync and 240p and 480i. So that's a very popular PVM for either people starting to get into a PVM 
and getting their first one or someone that is getting one to use for testing purposes or for videography purposes and those ten are selling a lot you had 12 sales in september and then 13 sales in october and then 22 sales in november so a total of 47 crts altogether for 8200 dollars during those three month time period now i do have our pricing here the lowest that was sold was 70 dollars, and it was a parts slash repair monitor and it was shipped so for 70 dollars, you could get an extra monitor for parts or try to fix one and then the highest was a $300 grade A monitor that was sold again including shipping so that would have been top quality and uh, serviced a little bit and looked really nice the average working price point again for that like B minus grade up to about an A minus grade the average price point for that shipped was $220 for those 804 Q series monitors. Again, great monitors if you're looking for something small and versatile. Those will accept nearly every kind of sync input. And I really do like them for the bench purposes. And here's some other smaller monitors that I wanted to point out to you that were sold during this time period. You've got the 9L series, the 9L2 and the 9L3. Those are both after the 804 series, so they're a little bit later and they um so they're a little newer a little bit of a redesign and you'll see right here at the power button point on the background picture how it does not have the same loop uh, pull hooks that the 804 series has it has just kind of a molded plastic uh, knob instead so that's something that's significantly different on there and then it does accept cards in this one. So you do need a 129X card if you want to do RGB in this one. Those are sold for about $200 a piece. There was four of those. And then the other one I wanted to mention was the five inch monitors. Those have been selling like crazy. They're really getting up there, um, averaging about $290 a piece. I feel like the working price for one of those delivered right now is $300. They're just really popular for some reason to get one of those small ones. Now we're going to start looking at the Sony PVM 13 inch sales that occurred. And we're going to start with the 13 numbered series. This could be anything that is 13 and then a number after that. Most of them are like 51Q, 54Q, 53MD. I also included any N series monitors that did support RGB. So there's a couple N6Us on the list and one N2U. And then there's some older monitors on there, like a 1390 and a 1271Q, but just a ton of these monitors sold. We had a total of 21 sales this quarter, and that amounted to $7,454. The average sales price being $355. Now that is for all of them together. So the lowest sale was a 1342Q. That is $150 and it was picked up. Now that is one of the older ones on the list. That monitor does do RGB. However, it does not have an onboard service menu and it does not have speaker support for the mono speaker on, on it for the RGB line. The highest sale was a pristine condition 1354Q, which is the model before the 20M2 you and that sold for six hundred ten dollars shipped the working pvm average price for again that b minus grade to a minus grade uh, shipped you're looking at about 380 dollars now look do not get confused here this does not include anything that has really been uh, professionally serviced or uh, had any kind of parts repair done to it that would increase the value these are just ones that you're going to get kind of in the working shape uh, listed as working on eBay. That's a pretty good price point for that. And again, this is eBay working PVM average price, $380, $380 range for one of those shipped. Now let's get into the M series, which is one upgraded step from that. These tend to be a little bit newer than those 50 models and 40 models and 90 models that we were talking about on the prior slide. Again, a lot of sales here, just tons of them throughout this month. We're going to look at a couple in specific that I have noted here. You notice one of these outliers in September 15th for $995.
NOS. That is actually new old stock, so that came in the original box and then was shipped with original paperwork and original foam. So kind of new in box, complete in box, tested kind of a unit so you can understand why that one would cost a bit more. And then we've got a couple that were picked up. Now I did also include the M4s you'll notice. So the difference between the two of these monitors is the M2 and the M4 are pretty much exactly the same except the M4 has higher resolution on its display. So it has an 800 TV line tube where the 14 M2 only has a 600 TV line tube. And other than that, the monitors are pretty much identical as far as performance and function. The 14 M4 though has always got some outliers on it where the prices are just crazy on it. So we have one from October 10th for $1,600 and then one from November 14th for almost $1,300. And then we'll have some more reasonable prices on here for some others, like one for uh, $630 and around that $600, $700 price point. But look at this listing here again, this is over $1,600 and it's in Texas. It's for this 14 m for u and it says it's sold. It's from a reputable seller. I didn't see it relisted or sell again. So I thought that was incredible. So again, let's look closely here at some 14M series sales statistics. We've got 10 sales of that M2 uh, for a total of just under $5,000. The average sales price, $499. Now the lowest was a $193 for a working that was pickup only. And then the highest was that new old stock for $995. The working PVM average price is $430 shipped and that is just about $50 over the last series that we talked about and that makes complete sense how you're getting this little bit better a little bit newer monitor and you have to pay a little bit more premium for that now if we jump down here to the 14m4 we're going to have six sales totaling $5,000 almost $5,100 and our average sales price is $848 with the lowest sale being $445 that was a local pickup and then the highest sale being that $1,600 listing that we had seen. So that all together makes this one always hard to judge what it's exactly going to sell for because I believe the working PVM average price should be $700, $800 around that number. But still, sometimes it just seems to sell consistently for more than that for some reason. That's the M series data. Now we're going to go and move on to that next progression of monitor and this being the final line that Sony had in the PVMs. And again, we're only looking at this L2 series, the L series, L2. So the L2s are 600 TV line monitors, and they uh, are again made in the early 2000s up to the mid 2000s. We're going to start with that 14 inch. You'll see a lot of sales there. Uh, the highest being $891 again, just crazy. More of them go for that $430 price point to $500. And then if we look down here at the 20 L2s, we did have three of those sell. And again, we had one that was $1375, but that was shipped and that was new old stock in the box. And then we had one that go for $450 shipped and $300 picked up. I'll be honest with you, those 20 L2s, that's pretty darn reasonable to me. First off, look at this one. Whoever got this one got a really good deal. $450 shipped for this working good condition 20L2. It's listed as multi-format, it's not. Now this one is a white version because it's the medical unit and it actually sold for, again, $1,375 shipped, but it was in the original box tested with all the goodies in there. I can't really fault anybody for buying this, if you're going to spend that kind of money and uh, it's really hard to have a lot of peace of mind with these things. So might as well spend it on one that's still in the new box and in as good a condition as possible, even if it is going to cost you almost $1,400. It's if it's something you want, it may be worth that investment. So we got the 14 L2s, eight total sales on there, $3,700 average selling price of $467. The lowest being a $325 sale shipped. The highest being $891 shipped. The working PVM price point for that, I have that at about $460 right now. So 
that's what I would think you would have to pay between 430 to 460 on that one. A little bit higher than the M series, but not very much. The only reason it's higher is because it's a little newer. And other than that, not much difference there. The 20 L2, again, three sales for $2,100, just over $700 average. The lowest sale being a $300 pickup and the highest being that one we just looked at that was $1,375. I'm giving this an A working PVM average price of about $750 because again, this one's hard to tell where it's going to be listed. So if you can get it for $750 or less, that is the price point for right now for eBay for that monitor in good working condition. Here are the 20 inch M series. We transitioned out of the 14 inch on that last slide and we're moving into the 20 inches and up for the rest of our show today. And we're gonna start with the M2s and M4s. So this is the same scenario that I discussed with the 14 M series where you have the twos and the fours, the 20 M2s. I did have a couple that were pickups only and then some that were fixed. I put fix next to those because those definitely had a serious repair on them that needed an internal circuit board fix. Uh, so you've got that one that had a fix on September 10th for 591 and this extremely cheap one down here was a pickup and it had a problem with it. Kind of a parts monitor down there at the bottom. And then the other ones here, the 20 M4s, see this was kind of wild. There were 20 M4s that sold and they all some of them sold for less than what the 14 M4 sold for shipped. So that's an interesting statistic to look at. We'll look at those numbers a little closer here. First, the 20 M2 sales, that's a total of $4,200 nearly. Average selling price of $596. The lowest being that $113 sales price that we talked about. It was a parts only monitor and it was pickup only. The highest being $895. So this one's going to have that working PVM average sales price point of $750 and up. Very similar to that L2 that we just talked about, that 20 L2. Both of these are so close to each other that you have to give them nearly the same grade on price points. Plus, they don't have very much features that uh, differentiate one from the other. Now, the 20 M4 is, again, the high-resolution tube, so that does show a little bit better on that 20 inch screen and i will also tell you that this is not now this is not the case with the 14 inch version of this monitor but when it comes to the 20 inch the 20 m4 that tube inside there is compatible with one of those other multi-format monitors like the 20 l5 pvm or any of the 20 inch bvms that need an 800 tv line tube or up the 20 m4 u tube is compatible with it not the 14M4, that's not compatible with the BVMs that are 14 inches, just the 20M4U uses the same tube. So that makes it a little bit more valuable. Again, five sales, $4,800, $974 for average selling price. The lowest was $630, the highest $1,240. This working PVM average price point has to be about $1,200. I feel like they could just sell pretty much right away for $1,200 shipped if they are in a really good working condition. All right, now we're getting into the specialty monitor sales. Now, this was actually someone that was on my Patreon page, and he was able to sell his 2530 that was in good working condition for just over $1,200. So it was nice to see that monitor be able to sell. We also had a 2950Q, which is one of my favorites. It sold for $2,000 picked up. Now this one did include a box and the speakers and it was in really nice condition. So I feel like that was kind of a steal for anybody who got that at $2,000. So we had those two big sales, the 2530 and the 2950. 2950 was only available for pickup, so no shipping on that one. Now, there were 2030s that sold, three of those for about $2,100. So those were selling between $800 and $700 a piece for shipped working 2030s. Sometimes they would get up as high as $900. There were some 1954Q sales. 
uh, for $1,300. There were four of them, but every single one of them, surprisingly, was a repair model and it was untested. So it was parts and they were all pickups. So not really any blowout or unbelievable deals or sales on that 54Q. All right, so now we're going to start with the PVM multi-format series monitors, starting with the 14L5s. And we had six 14L5s that sold. Three were shipped and three were pickup onlys. And we had an average price of $631, almost $3,800 for the, the total price on those six sales. Average sale price was, uh, or the lowest price was $545. The highest sale price was $900. I again have to give this working PVM A minus to B minus grade on this one, $800 and up for a shipped version of this. If you can get it for less than that, it's a pretty good price. So this is again a multi format monitor. It's a little bit smaller in size than the BVMs. It's got a speaker on there and uh, it's really easy to use compared to the BVMs. Really nice looking PVM. I feel like it's very often overlooked for things like the 14M4U for some reason. But anyway, I want you to notice that a lot of those were picked up at $599, so I feel like that's a good deal. But the real deal were the two people in September who bought the two that were sold for $545 and shipped. So if you got those for $545 shipped, then those are two steals, those, those sales. You can see there's two sold. And then the same thing was with the 599 listing. There was three sold. Those were all picked up from the same seller. So now we're going to move on to the 20L5s, which is the bigger version of that L5 that we just looked at the 14 inch version of. Now we're going to look at the six sales of this monitor. I want you to notice one big thing on there that the majority of these were pickup only. So they go for sale on eBay, generally for a buy it now price pickup only and they would sell and someone would have to go get it. The only one that was shipped was that one in September 28th that was sold for buy it now for $1,140. Uh, again, these sales have just kind of popped up. And so you have to know when they're coming for the most part and then they go right away. And again, they're not being shipped. So you have to be ready to go travel. I know that the last two uh, I listed again in the Patreon page, and people told me that they went and bought those and, and went and picked those up. Those were in Pennsylvania. For that kind of a price, you got to be just ready to go, have the money ready sitting there. And once it comes available, just buy it and hopefully be able to make a trip to go pick these up. The average sale price for the six monitors was $1,349. The total of the six sales was $4,900 almost. So the lowest sale was $850. It was pickup and it did need some minor repairs. I could tell from the picture. And then the highest sale was a $2,000 pickup at the end of October a working PVM price point here. I'm giving this one a $2,000 price point just for one that's working that you could go pick up. This is not including any kind of shipping. It could be more than that. could be a little bit less than that. So, that's the price point. If you can find it for $850 or $1,200 shipped, you better just grab it when you see it because somebody else will right now. So here's a look at the last two that sold. They were $1,250. They were still in the working environment uh, when they were pictured and listed, taken basically by a salvage person out and then resold right away. The same person was uh, sold a couple of 14L5s too. So now let's get into some statistics on these sales. I have some pretty bright and colorful graphs here for you now. We're gonna look first at the total sales by size and it's separated here. And each one of these bars on this graph represents a month. So first starting in September, October, and November. I kind of made this graph so you could see that some of these areas are consistently in the same amount of sales each month. So the green, for example, that's all the 14 inch size monitors that sold this month had more 14 inches and this month had less blue had the blue stands for the 20 inch and above this first month had less 20 inches. Uh, however, if you look at the red ones, that's the number of smaller monitors that sold. 
And that is pretty darn consistent right there over a three month time period, the same number and the same amount of sales goes on, uh, you know, a couple of th three, four thousand dollars each month on that monitor. And then the big outlier here is this blue big section for the last 15,500 in November. And that's being heavily driven by that BVM D32 that we looked at earlier. All right, moving on now to our total sales for the quarter. If we look at our quarter three sales from our last quarter, we had a total of $59,000 in sales. Well, this quarter we totaled out to $72,100 in sales. That's an increase of $13,200 or pretty much 23% in increase in total sales volume. And then if we break that down and look at the number of total units sold for this quarter, there were 132 units sold, and units each unit is a PVM. And then this quarter, we had 150 units sold, so that's an increase of 18 units, or almost 14%. So again, we're still going through a growth period right now. And just some of the key analysis and our takeaways, most of the Sony PVMs and PVM prices have increased and are continuing to increase. Of course, the best deals are still going to be through local sales and through networking. And okay, I'm going to just go ahead and like little do a little shameless promotion of the Patreon right here because the last, I'd say, four or five weeks, I've gone in and I've shared uh, tons and tons of posts of PVMs, BVMs, Ikigamis, JVCs. Nearly all the monitors that were sold on this listing, at least ones that were at the better pricing, I had first posted on the Patreon page. And I know a lot of those Patreon members were able, they told me to get a lot of those L5s this month that were, again, at a better price than I could get them for myself and turn around and service and sell back to the community. It's way cheaper than I can ever find them for myself. So if I can't buy them myself, I'm sharing them in that Patreon page. So if you go there, you just join for a dollar a month and you can get and see every one of those listings. And if something works for you, it's near where you live. I even show the ones I find globally and uh, not only on eBay, any other listing site that I might find. So good things also come to those that are persistent and random great deals do happen just about every week on eBay. Restored monitors do still sell for more when they are available because there was only one really available this time around. Supplies are still extremely limited on the larger and better monitors, and most top-end monitors are still not being shipped, at least not the bigger ones that we talked about. Uh, be cautious, though, because there's always the too-good-to-be-true rule, and scams do still exist. But that's all we're going to talk about today. I really just want to say thank you so much for joining me. If you're still around to this point and you enjoyed this, please make sure you hit the like button for me. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you like to watch these types of videos. And lastly, I want to say a special thank you to the supporters at Patreon because without their support each month, I would not be able to spend the insane amount of time it takes to study all these silly numbers for sales and try to help people understand, you know, what, what the value is on these CRTs. I wouldn't be able to go into this much of a deep dive and make these great presentations without their support. So thank you very much. And guys, I will see all of you next time with some more retro content.